Imagine you're my servant. <laughs> and I get to pick your job. I get to tell you what to do. I'm your master. You're my slave. You don't have any rights. And let's say I decide your job is going to be doing taxes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? Who in here likes doing taxes? Loves. Loves doing taxes. Uh-huh. One, two people. No. <laughs> There's maybe 20, 25 max. So probably 98.5% of everyone here hates doing taxes. Well, that's going to be your job. And that's your job for 12 years. And I'm not going to pay you. And you're going to be graded and judged and compared to the other people. And so those 20, 25 people here, they're going to be praised above everyone else. You're going to be compared to them. You're less than. You're an underachiever. You need to try harder. You're average. You are a little bit above average. You're an F. <laughs> Now imagine, so you're my servant, you're going to do taxes for 12 years, I'm your slave driver, you're not going to get paid, you're going to be downgraded, denigrated, punished, you're going to have privileges taken away. Now if we did that to an adult, we would call it slavery. That is slavery. When you force somebody to do something, whether they want to do it or not, and you don't pay them, that's slavery. That's what we do to children. So from the start, school's not fair, and children know it, and they react to that. And the word educate has Greek roots, and it means to pluck light from the ethers and bequeath it or bestow it to another individual. Wow. To pluck light from the ethers and bequeath it or bestow it to another individual. How amazing is that thought? So that's where I started. I've always loved children, always loved teaching. My undergrad degree is a Bachelor of Science in Education. I started working in the public school systems and realized I hated it as much as an adult as I did as a child. It just didn't seem right. It seemed damaging. And then I got lost in real estate because my father thought that would be a good idea. Bless his heart, he's a good guy, but he said, maybe you should do real estate. So I thought, okay, because every child wants the approval of their parents. So I got a real estate degree and then I got lost in that world. What was I doing there? I don't know. And then one day, about um, 10 years later, I woke up and realized, I want to get a master's degree in counseling. Now, some of you have already heard of me. I'm the counselor, Jane Fendelman, who says ADHD, the multi-million dollar medical myth. It is big money, big industry, big pharma. Now, I'm not saying by any means that ADD, ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder, ED, emotional disorder, depression, I'm not saying those don't exist. We can definitely see the symptoms and behaviors for ADD, ADHD, all those disorders. I'm just saying they're not a chemical imbalance. That is normal for a child or any person for that matter to have trouble applying themselves to something that's boring. Really, could I make you do taxes? Could I make you? Yeah. There, right there, you. Could I make you do taxes for 12 years? Could I make you? <laughs> no. There's no way I could make you do that. You would rebel. There would be a rebellion. You would rise up against the master, rage against the machine. And that's appropriate. That's healthy. That's right. That's strong. That's normal. So yes, I could drug you. And you don't have a choice because you're my servant. I could drug you and make you do taxes for 12 years. I could. I could. I could make you into a little zombie, my little zombie. 
So, okay, parents come to me and they want me to, and I can, yes I can, cure your child's ADD, ADHD within three to five sessions without drugging them by just working with the parents. I can. And it'll be fun. It'll be really fun, because I think counseling's fun. Counseling should be fun. Why should life be a drag? I can help you stop asking the question, how do I make my child do their homework, get good grades in, get good grades in school? That, as the Buddhists say, is a question wrongly put. A bad question will get you a bad answer. So don't ask, how do I make my child do their homework? The question is, how do I make my child want to do their homework? How do I make my child want to get good grades in school, to excel, to cooperate, to have a heart and soul connection with me, to feel excited about school, about life, about the universe. How do I make them want to? Not how do I make them. Like, guys, when you're romancing your woman and your wife and she is not in the mood, it's not how do you make her have sex with you, it's how do you make her want to? It's two very different things. Right, women? <laughs> That's right. How do I make you want to cooperate with me, do the things that I want you to do? How do I make you want to? That's my only job as a teacher. So eat your peas or you're not getting your dessert. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Or you're not going out to the mall with your friends until you clean your room. Yeah, you could put it that way. You could say it like that. Or you could say, my darling dear, these are magical peas from the island of Zanzibar, picked by magical elves straight out of the garden of Princess Buttercup. And when you eat them and they go down into your tummy, they make little magical rays of light that make you giggle. Try them, I dare you. These are special magic giggling peas. <laughs> That's different than eat your peas or no dessert. It's different. It's the intention. You can get people to do anything you want pretty much with a smile in your heart. Are you nagging or is there a smile in your heart? It's going to make a big difference in how it comes across. Do you want respect, admiration, loving connection, joy, peace, affinity. You have to give it. You cultivate it in your heart. If you tell me a little five-year-old or 15-year-old child is in charge of your emotions, I will call bolt on you. Is a child really in charge of your emotions? Or is this a test from the universe to see if you can stay relaxed into your power, make your request, find an inspiration to get what you want, and get it in a positive way? Have a, have a rewarding, inspiring mentality. Use reward and inspiration. Don't have a punishing mind. What did that ever get you? except for a miserable household. And really, change your definition for success. Success isn't a child who gets good grades, goes to a good college, gets a good job, and makes a lot of money. Because have any of you here ever made a lot of money? And just that alone, just that, just the money, made you really happy? 
Maybe at first it did. But after a while, if you have a bunch of money and you're all alone, or your relationships are sour and the connection's not there, so what? You have a bunch of money. I don't consider you a success. I consider a successful child a young person who has self-love, self-respect, is caring and kind toward others, and can hear their inner voice and follow their truth, their destiny, their passion. And apparently we have a 68% 68, no, that's the divorce rate. And why do we have a divorce rate that high? Because people don't get to play after school and learn how to socialize and build relationships. No, they're worker bees. We have an 85% of adults hate their job. 85%, 85%, 85%. You're a grown up. You can have any job you want. You're a grown-up. When I was young, I used to say that all the time. When I grow up, I'm going to do anything I want, because I'll be a grown-up. I can do anything I want. You're a grown-up. Have any job you want. Hey, why pick a job you hate? Why? Because you were trained in school to work at work that you hate. Taxes. <laughs> OK, so a success is a person who follows their dreams, who has courage who is willing to live outside the box. I mean, God forbid your child is Albert Einstein, who got kicked out of school, I think, three times. Albert Einstein. What if your child is Jim Carrey, and he cracks jokes all day in school? Hopefully, if your child is like Jim Carrey, he has a teacher like Jim Carrey had, who gave him permission to get up and entertain the class if he would just shut up during the lesson. At the end of every lesson, he got up to entertain the class. OK, so let's educate our children, really educate them. Let's pluck light from the ethers and bequeath and bestow upon our children that light. Let's not make them do homework, schoolwork, be a good person. Let's make them want to 